we have Liza Colby, a thoroughly modern woman who's chosen single parenthood, who took herself to the fertility clinic to be artificially inseminated, which, of course, for her makes perfect sense, because why should Liza Colby have another lame relationship with an inferior human being? Inferior only because he happens to be male. But somehow you got the idea that Adam insinuated himself into the process instead of the designated donor. But of course that makes perfect sense for Adam because of course he'd like to have claimed Eliza's baby. I thought this was none of your business. Which is why I'm not going to do anything about it. Unlike you, on the other hand, who seems hell-bent on, on getting to Marion and Stuart's wedding, just so you can drop this bomb on Liza Erica, and wreck her life. I am trying to concentrate, oh, okay? Yes, it has to be done in public, doesn't it? Public humiliation, nothing else will do. Oh, oh that'll help. Well, I guess you really hate Liza Colby. Although, I don't know why. I mean, what did she ever do to you? One more word out of you, Erica, and I'm gonna pitch you out of this car! You are not! <sighs> your accusations are ludicrous. Well, I know what you're up to, Dr. Hayward. I have nothing but high hopes and good wishes for Liza Colby. Oh, and I'm the queen of Ethiopia. <laughs> This might be hard for you to realize, Erica, but I happen to be the best friend Liza's got. Oh, sure. Humiliating her in public. And what if it were you, hmm? Wouldn't you like to know? Not like that. Adam invaded her body. Excuse me? There's no other word for it but rape. High-tech rape. Wonder if you know what that word means. He foisted his sperm on her without her knowledge or consent. What would you call that? So that's why I'm racing back to Pine Valley. To tell Liza that she's not carrying Jake's baby before it's too late. Jake? Martin? Jake? Martin? Well, how did he get involved in this? He was the one she chose as a donor. Good genes, no strings, no involvement. It was a no-brainer. I don't believe this. Jake Martin now, I... Well, meanwhile, Adam, Adam, I, I have seen them together recently, and I just assumed that it was because of the wedding, but Adam, of course, he's never given in. So don't you think that Liza has a right to know what's really happening? And of course Adam has promised to raise this baby. As if it were his own, that's right. Convenient offer, wouldn't you say? So that's why I'm racing back to tell Liza. Not to hurt her, but to stop this catastrophe. You are the biggest hypocrite I've ever met. Look, if you really cared about Liza Colby, you wouldn't ruin her mother's wedding day, and you certainly wouldn't drop this bulletin on her in public. And what would you suggest, Erica? Writing a letter? Yes, maybe. Or maybe you would take her on the side. You would tell her privately. You would you would tell her of your suspicions gently. She wouldn't believe me. Of course she wouldn't. You know that. But informing her, helping her, warning her, that's not your purpose at all, and you know that. I mean, stealing her... her Amniocentesis reports, that's illegal as well as unethical, Doctor. I'm sure you know that. And ditto for Adam Chandler's DNA. But what you wanted to do, you wanted to set up a little file. You wanted to drop this DNA dynamite. You don't want to help Liza Colby. You want to wreck her life and wound her as deeply as possible. And probably... You damaged my reputation, Liza. That was unforgivable. So is attempted murder, at least where I come from. That was an accident. You know, why don't you just drop the line, all right? We have your confession on videotape. Just save your breath and leave my office. So unfriendly. You know, I kind of get that way when someone tries to kill my husband. It peeves me. Are you hearing me? The hospital board fired you and said adios. You got it? I don't think that's quite enough, but if you come here to even the score, well, guess what? We're even. So why don't you just take that as your cue, and why don't you just leave? but I will do it for your sake. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And you are the rudest. You're the most vile man I have ever had the misfortune to be in a car with. Just, just drop me off the next exit. <laughs> you're right. I'm sorry, Erica. There's no four-star hotel in the middle of nowhere. I will stay in that gas station. I really don't care, but I will not spend one more hour I in this car. I am not fully out. I'm 
not leaving this highway to get bogged down in snow in the middle of nowhere in some crummy back road. This is a dangerous road, David, and you are a dangerous man. Now, I am not going to spend one more minute in this car with you. Just stop I am it. not stopping this car in the middle of this snowstorm. Well, then you get ready to hear me scream. Look, if you don't shut your damn mouth, I'm going to shut it for you.